Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's video channel on YouTube. Um, today we're going to do the second part of the air locker install series on the 200 series Land Cruiser. Uh, so we've got the front differential here on the bench. Uh, before we take it apart, we're going to check and see what the existing backlash is so we have a baseline for what we're going to set it to uh, when we put the ARB in, just to double check to make sure we're still within range. These are kind of odd as far as checking the backlash instead of it being a normal open differential where you do it with a plunge dial indicator these you've got to go in through the drain hole uh, let's if I can zoom you in there a little bit you've got to go in through the drain plug hole with a horizontal indicator and then put a large pry bar or something down here to catch the cross pin and then wiggle it back and forth to get your backlash reading. And we've got about eight thousandths backlash showing on the dial indicator. And I'll pull that out to give you a better idea of what that looks like. So it's a, uh, they spin front to back instead of plunging up and down like the normal ones. So now that we've got our baseline backlash measured, we can start disassembly. And I'm going to go ahead and get the mount here and this long side tube popped off. It's just a series of 17 millimeter bolts. So I'm going to get those taken off and then I'm going to split the two case halves, uh, which is a series of 14 millimeter bolts. Uh, so let me split all that apart and I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've got the big 19 millimeter bolts that held the mount on out and then all these 14s that go around the circumference. And we can take a pry bar and stick them. There's some pry lugs. We can stick the pry bar in there and start separating the two case halves. fun when they get stuck on the dowel pins. There we go. So now I take the outer case off. We pick the differential up out of there. Watch your fingers. There we go. And now you can see the, the pinion gear here. And then here's our bearing races. So the next thing we've got to do is take the outer oil seal out right here. So we'll go ahead and pop that out. That thing is really in there. Take our oil seal out, and then we can find driving races to push the two sets of carrier bearing shims out. That one's too big. There we go, that one will work. And we want to make sure that we keep this shim and this race together. So we're going to put that over here. And we're going to mark that one pinion side. Put 
I'm going to come over and do the same on this flange. There we go. And same thing. We're going to put these over on this side and mark them as the carrier side. That way we know which side shims came from and where everything goes back together. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape all the old silicone RTV off the housing halves and wash both of these and then we'll come back. Okay, so we've got our original carrier. We ran it for the parts washer to degrease it uh, just so it's not as gross when we're taking the old ring off. And we can now take all the ring gear bolts out of it. And I already went ahead and loosened them in a crisscross pattern. I just gotta run them the rest of the way out now. go we've got all the bolts loose take them out and we'll stick them in the ultrasonic tank to get all the old loctite off of them now we can just take a brass hammer and knock the uh, ring gear off there we go and we just destroyed the instructions We'll put the ring gear back in the parts washer. And now, because this is a clamshell differential, we've got to do math to figure out the shim stacks so we can compare between the, uh, the ARB thickness and the original carrier thickness. So we'll wipe the carrier flange down and we're going to put our original carrier race that came out on here along with the uh, the master shim that came off of that side and we're going to measure the distance from here to the face of the flange so we'll get our dial calipers out we'll zero them and then we've got a straight edge. And we'll take our straight edge and our calipers and measure our thickness. And I got 133.37. Double check that we're the same on this side. About 133.36. And this is the fun part, is trying to extrapolate across the flange. So it looks like about one, 133.2 millimeters from here to here. So we'll write that down on our instructions. Set this aside for a minute. Set those guys back off the side and this guy. And then we can grab our ARB. 
and we'll put one of the new ARB bearing races on there. And then the three millimeter master shim from the ARB kit on top. And we'll measure the same. And 132.6. So looks like about 132.7 for both sides averaged out. So that would be distance C. So then A minus C should equal B. So let me do some math and we'll come back. So I did the math on the shim pack and then compared it to our original A measurement and I was wrong. So I went back and remeasured again, redid the math again. Originally I'd come up with a half millimeter uh, shim for B. What we actually needed was a quarter millimeter shim for B. So we've got that set in there with the ARB master shim. And we've got our calipers set back to our original A dimension. And now we're spot on. So we know this side is shimmed correctly. And now we can go ahead and go to swapping on the pinion. Or no, I'm sorry, not the pinion. We can go ahead and bolt the ring gear on. So I'm gonna go put this in the freezer, finish cleaning up the ring gear and put that in the oven. And when we're ready to reassemble, I'll bring you back. Okay, now we're getting ready to press these uh, bearing retainer sleeves into the clamshell halves. And according to ARB's instructions, we need to warm these up to about 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so we've got a heat gun blowing inside there with aluminum foil wrapped loosely around the bottom to try to retain it. And we'll get out our thermometer. And we're right about 300 degrees. So we're ready to go there. So we're gonna leave that. And then we've got some Loctite 620 retaining compound that I need. Pop that open. And we'll take the retaining compound and we'll put it right here, right below the knurling, so that when we press the bearing in, or the retainer in, it spreads evenly. So take that off, take this guy off. And I'm gonna put a uh, race driver puck underneath just so that we're not pushing against the, uh, the retaining pins in the clamshell half. So we got that there. Oh, apparently if you warm them up super well, you don't even have to press them in. We'll put a little bit of press pressure on there. Anyway, while it cools, just to make sure we're all good.
Bring you over here, straight how I've got it set up in the press. So we've got it sitting on one bearing race driver here just to keep the pins off the press plates. And then I've got another race driver sitting on top of the new retainer. And we're just going to press that down to make sure we're all the way seated. With the clamshell half hot, the uh, retainer dropped all the way in. We'll hold that under a little tension while it cools down some. I'm going to go ahead and start the other half heating up and go ahead and press that one in and we'll come back once the ring gear is warmed up and we'll bolt the ring gear on. So the ring gear is cooled and the carrier is warmed up. I've got the, the whole setup clamped in the press to make it easier to hold while I torque all the ring gear bolts. Um, I've got aluminum pucks on the top and the bottom so that we don't have the press hitting that carrier. And on the bottom you just want to make sure that the uh, race still spins and that you're not crunching the bearings. If you do it this way, um, we'll go ahead and set our torque wrench to 101 foot-pounds. And all the bolts have been cleaned uh, through the ultrasonic tank and then with brake parts cleaner. And then they've got red Loctite on them as well. star pattern. Let's make sure we do this evenly. And then once I've got most of them tight, I go around in a circle. Make sure I've got all of them. just to be sure I got everything. Grab our paint pen, make witness marks so that later on, if anything were to have moved, we can tell pretty easily. And it also lets us know that we torqued all these so we don't second guess later if we actually remember to torque them or not. Okay, let me move the camera back over to the assembly bench and we'll start putting the actual uh, carrier together. Okay, so now we can take the shim pack that we calculated earlier and we can drop it into the deep half of the clamshell along with the new ARB supplied bearing race. Get that started in there. Then we can take a race driver. And you can hear it ring when it's seated. Good there. 
and we'll reach in, make sure we can't wiggle the shims so we know we're good and tightened in there. Now we can take the carrier and carefully, without smashing our fingers, drop that in there, like so. And let me go prep the uh, other housing and we'll start figuring up the shim pack that goes on this side. Okay, now that we've got the differential in the deep cut carrier, we can start calculating up our shim pack for the other side. So we can take all the rest of the shims that were in the ARB pack. There's a bunch of fins and then one master. We can go ahead and measure those and write that down. And that's 4.83 millimeters in this case. And then we'll take our seal housing and bend the copper line so it sticks straight out. Slide the remaining shim pack over that with the uh, thicker washer on the outside. Now we can feed that down into this bearing bore. stick our race on top of there. And on this side, I'm going to stick it in the press and actually press the uh, the bearing uh, race in just because I don't want to damage the copper line knocking it in with a hammer. Go ahead and stick a press tool on there. We'll get a spacer. So I want to pump so far. different driver because that one's going to bottom out. There we go. And then we'll just reach up inside there, make sure there's no play on the seal housing so we know that the race is all the way seated. Set that off to the side for just a second. Move you back over here. Now, I'm gonna drop this very carefully on here.
and we're going to get that as evened up as we can, and then we're going to measure the gap between the two case halves. So let me grab feeler gauges, and I'll be right back. And when you're sticking these in there, they want to fan out. So you've got to make sure you hold them squished together so you don't feel the drag from them fanning. go. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me do some quick math. We'll add those up. See how many millimeters we've got. Okay, so that's 2.336 millimeters. Is our gap. And then we're going to subtract that from our original shim thickness of 0.483. We get 2.494. And that's our end float amount. And then we add the preload amount of 0.6 to the end float amount, which makes it 3.094. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, and now we're going to pop this back apart, pull that shim pack out, and adjust it so it's as close to 3.094 as we can get it and then we'll put everything back together. So we'll be back once I pop all that apart. So before the parts were cleaning and I forgot to film it, we went ahead and drilled and tapped our bulkhead fitting hole in the uh, shallow side of the clam clamshell, uh, followed the ARB instructions, came down 15 millimeters, and then centered up as well as we could on this casting rib. So we're ready to go back together there. And then we took a large socket and formed the coil and wrapped it. There's really good pictures in the ARB instructions of this. We've marked it at 20, or 20 millimeters from the end. So now we can go ahead, take our tubing cutter and trim that to length. There we go. And then we can slip our shim pack that we calculated back over that. And then we can carefully feed the entire assembly down in here, kind of spinning and rotating and wiggling 
to make sure we don't pinch his copper line as we feed everything up in there. And I'm actually going to grab a little screwdriver to help me wiggle that up there easier. And again, you can hear it ring when we've got it all the way seated. Now we can come in here and adjust our copper line. And we'll come in in a little bit, clean everything up, and put our O-rings in there. But again, make sure we can't wiggle the seal housing. Make sure it's properly seated. And then we'll start cleaning everything up for final assembly. Okay, now that we've got our shims, everything set and pressed in, we can go ahead and put the uh, air locker O-rings in. I like to, the little bag they come in, just put some gear oil in there and mix it around to make sure the, uh, the O-rings get well coated. And then we can just start working them in. And you just wanna press them in so that they say flat and square. And you'll work your way around. And then you'll end up with like a W of seal sticking in. So just carefully work that down in and make sure that it doesn't, uh, that none of your O-rings are twisted. There we go, got our O-ring in there nice, and it's lubed up. I'm gonna clean the case halves, and we'll put some Toyota orange sealer on here, and we'll start buttoning the case together. Okay, so we've gone ahead and taken our Toyota transaxle seal packing and run a bead all the way around the housing. Now we can carefully lower it on here, kind of wiggling it as we go to keep from pinching the O-rings. Rotating the pinion a little bit to get us to seat. Thank you. 
and this is not particularly fun, with the pins that hold the clamshell half stationary, you can't twist like you normally would to rock these together. I'm actually going to go grab a little plastic spoon. I'm actually going to use the back side of a dull dental pick to try to work that back in there. Okay, after some uh, choice expletives, we've got the case halves mated, got the uh, seals in there without rolling them over. So now we can go ahead and start torquing. And we're going to start with our 14 headed bolts, and those go to 48 foot pounds. Crisscross. Now let's go around and grab the rest of them. And then the big ones, the 19 millimeter headed ones, get tightened up to 114. Okay, we'll let the sealer sit up for a little bit so that I don't get it all over me. And then we'll come back, double check our final backlash, put our bulkhead fitting in, and then put our output shaft on, and we'll be ready to go back in the truck. Well, somehow I managed to delete the original footage of bolting the uh, long side tube back on, and also putting in the bulkhead fitting. Not you didn't really miss a lot. Um, it's basically put more orange sealer on there and torque the four bolts that hold the long side in and then put the small ARB O-ring followed by the ARB bulkhead fitting in 
and tighten them up uh, and leak check them with compressed air to make sure you don't leak. Um, this one, we leak checked it, everything was good, put it back in the truck, uh, took it for test spin around the parking lot, turned the compressor on, and I must have nicked the seal, putting it back together. Uh, you could hear it leaking after we'd driven it. So now the case is back out, um, and I've got another set of O-rings on the way here, and I'll pop this case back apart, do the O-rings again, and hopefully it'll be good to go uh, when we go throw it back in tomorrow. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in to Otram's uh, video channel. If you like what you saw, subscribe below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.